Alrighty all, welcome back to my channel. This is A.R. Cavley, and we're going to delve into the uh, deeper horror afflicting the crew of the Wanda. When we left off, Alicia was alone in the bridge, and her crazed crewman Luke had just murdered the captain and attacked another crewman. The rover in the Armadillo ATV is stranded, stuck in a huge storm, and they are trying to decide. Half of them want to go, half of them want to stay, or at least the driver wants to stay. Uh, Giovanni, he is very much against driving in this huge storm that they're in. So that's where we're at now. We will pick up from there. Alicia has calmed down in our last session. She was she was screaming and was still trying to adjust to the situation, but she now she realizes that she can keep Luke out of the bridge. She ha she has control of the airlocks, and as she's thinking about that, she realizes that she can lock him in the ship. As she's thinking about eventual rescue, she doesn't want him to escape and maybe uh, set an ambush for the returning crew whenever they should happen to get there. So she locks down the, uh, the airlocks and she locks down the hatch to the, the lower cargo bay, the ramp so that Luke cannot escape. From the bridge, she has permissions to take care of that fairly easily. Luke is a skilled navigator, a skilled crewman, but she, she doesn't feel that his skills would necessarily allow him to override that and in fact as she's doing that she has locked the compartment that she's in she's locked the bridge she's locked everything down she's gone through she's triple checked she has disabled any kind of maintenance mode which is what he used to attack Benicio and now she's calmed down She's still breathing heavily. She's still terrified. She's never seen anything like that before. That, that kind of murder. That bloody murder. As she pictures the captain's brains dashed into the deck of his stateroom. And then there's a pounding on the hatch. And she jumps. <gasps> and over the intercom Luke's voice purrs why don't you let me in Alicia don't worry I won't harm you I just don't want you to leave me here her immediate reaction is to start screaming but she grabs hold of herself, realizes that she has done enough screaming. And she says, Why don't you go lock yourself in your stateroom? Lock yourself in a cabin. I'll lock you in there for your own safety and for mine. Where's Benicio? What did you do to him. <laughs> he uh, decided to take a little stroll around the spaceship, you might say. Did you kill him? I hope so. He wanted to leave me behind. I think you want to leave me behind too, Alicia. And he hammers on the the hatch again, and she jumps. 
I'm not going to leave you behind. What is wrong with you? Luke, why? Why? Ask the captain why. He wanted to leave me behind. He thought that I had been infected by something. Hey, are you going to come out? <laughs> Luke, no way. I don't want you to kill me. Look, just put down the hammer and get into the get into a room. We'll lock you in there for your safety and for mine. We'll wait until uh, wait until Owen gets back, and we'll we'll figure this all out. If there is some kind of infection, then then Rosemary can give you an exam, and we can we can make things better. <sighs> Rosemary, if it weren't for the captain, she would not even be on this ship. Uh, and I guess since the captain can't defend her anymore, she probably won't be on this ship very long, will she? Um, no, I have to refuse. Let me in. Let me in. No. Have it your way. And the the hum of the intercom clicks off. And Alicia looks around. There's not really much for her to grab. She she knows Luke's a smart guy and he's familiar with the ship. So even though she's locked in there, she's she's a, she's terrified that he's gonna lay another some kind of trap. So the only thing she can do is she grabs from the one of the small technical tool pouches. She grabs the longest screwdriver that she can, and she just keeps it. And she backs away from the door as far as she can, just waiting, just waiting. And then she hears, she hears the sound of the arcing and sparking. And she sees, she sees a, um, a little red area around the edge of the hatch into the bridge. Now, they don't really have a cutter that she thinks it could cut through. But she doesn't know. She doesn't know what Luke's up to. She hears, she hears the distant snapping and popping through the hatch. And she turns on the intercom and says, Luke, what are you doing? What are you doing? If you don't want to come out, well, now I've made sure that you can't come out, Alicia, my dear. I've welded you in. Sort of a cask of a Montiliato. Is that how you say that? That Edgar Allan Poe, where he breaks his friend within the wall? Well, that's what I've done to you, Alicia, so that you cannot escape, so that you cannot leave me. I guess now we all wait. And he clicks the intercom off. And now she now she's panicked because her plan, if he can he can unweld it if he needs to. But now she's stuck in there, so she's no. She has even less control than before. Um, so she sits there for a while, thinking about what to do. And after a after a bit, 
she decides to try to call Owen. Now, from the uh, from the standard roles uh, or the standard rules, I could have let her maybe try to convince Luke, uh, have them do a like a conflict, but he's kind of an NPC now, and he's murderously crazy. So I decided that she would not have at this point a chance of convincing him to just let her go. And Luke, realizing that there's that he can't get out and that he can't access the he can't access the bridge. But he also he doesn't want her to contact the crew. He doesn't want her to be able to collaborate with the group out there and call for help. So what he has done is he's gone to the upper comms, which is right outside the hatch. This is a hatch leading up into the upper comms array. Now this upper comms array, as described, it's mounted above the Ford crew section, and it has an emergency exit hatch. So, being as it's an emergency exit, I don't, I don't see that as being something that you would normally just go in and out. You probably have to like blow it. You know, you pull the handle and it, it, it pops open for emergencies only. And since it is an emergency exit, I don't know that she would. One, maybe she's not thinking about that. She's smart, so uh, she probably would have thought about every way in and out to try to lock him in. So I'm going to say on a... I'm going to say on a 4, 5, or 6, she can't actually lock this emergency hatch. Okay, so she can. Uh, she can... Um, she can lock it, and we'll say that she we'll say that she has that she was she was smart enough because she her goal was to keep him in the in the ship, so she would have thought about she would have thought about that. But as she goes to radio, she gets no signal. There's no carrier, there's no response. And as she looks to investigate the system, there's a big red warning sign, comms array offline. And she immediately knows what Luke has done. And so now she's stuck inside And then the lights flicker and go off. The emergency lanterns light the bridge. They flick on, casting the bridge in a dull red glow. And she manages to barely keep control of herself as she heads to a corner behind one of the stations gripping her screwdriver in a white knuckle grip, just waiting to see what Luke has in store for her next. So now we will flash over to the ATV, where we left off there. Owen and Yovani were in an argument trying to get back to the ship. Yovani, there's something he's terrified of driving in a storm, and he is a... He's a man with leadership skills. He's an experienced scout. He's been on all sorts of planets. So there is obviously something in his history that has made him terrified of, of this. So in the confrontation, I'm going to have Owen roll because he's trying to convince Giovanni to do something that he doesn't want to do. And this is just a... Social role. Here we have our um, 
on page 71, we have our dice modifiers. So as we look at the characters, I don't think either, I don't think anyone really on the ship had a great deal of social. No, so his social, uh, Owen's social is six. And Giovanni's social is seven. So very, very close together. Uh, no, no bonus for either one there. So it's going to be a straight up uh, roll. Oh, let's see. Okay, so add leader of trying to convince two or more characters or liaison. Oh, I didn't check. I didn't actually check their skills. I know Giovanni has leadership as a skill of one. And he's not trying to... Well, I guess he is kind of trying to convince more than one people, more than one person that it's dangerous out there. So... Um, but he's also freaked out, which is not very leadershipy. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave that as is. And do you have a? Nope. All right. So Owen does not have any liaison or leadership skills either. Now Owen does have a lower social. And so that's going to give him a minus one on his roll. And it's just going to be a straight up social roll as he tries to convince um, Giovanni to, to risk the storm and go back. with a minus one for having a lower social. All right. Not, not enough. Close, but no cigar. Giovanni finally says, I am not going in that storm. There, there, you cannot convince me. It will not help Alicia or Luke if we get pull out of this gully and immediately get destroyed. Look out that window, Owen. And he motions towards the, the big uh, bubble canopy that's at the front of the ATV. And Owen looks and he has to admit that Giovanni is, is right. Um... The, the the storm does look terrible. But Alicia is alone in the ship. I'm gonna say on a I'm gonna say on a five or six. Owen Owen's gonna try to physically force him out of the seat. I'm only saying on a five or six. One, because Owen's not necessarily a violent person to begin with. And two, um, he knows that Giovanni may be right, but he the thought of leaving Alicia there alone for the duration of the storm, however long it might be, and of the trek back, which add on, uh, I think, like two hours. But, we'll see, five or six. Okay, nope. So he collapses back into the chair and he says fine all right you're right you're right Giovanni you're right and he reaches out and he picks up the mic or the radio rover one to Wanda rover one to Wanda can you hear me Alicia, can you hear me?
Rover one to Wanda. Can anyone hear me? Please pick up. Please respond. And as he lets off the push to talk button, waiting for a reply, he hears, I can hear you, doctor. Luke, is Alicia okay? Have you hurt Alicia? Oh, no, no, no. She is fine. She is safely tucked away in the bridge. I'm afraid she won't be getting out of the bridge for a while, though. Luke, did you really kill the captain? It's true. He wanted to leave me behind. You want to leave me behind, too. So maybe it's best for everybody if you don't return to base. You can't get in anyway. She's locked the ship, you know. Luke. Luke, you've got to surrender yourself. We'll figure out what's going on. What is wrong? Why would you do that? You know that we would never leave you. Yes, that is... That is what she tried to tell me, too. But no. I know. I know that you are looking to leave me behind. Yes, like the captain, you think I'm infected. I'm not infected. I just understand now what you people are really up to. Don't come back here, Owen, for the sake of everybody. Luke, Luke, what about Benicio? And he gets a emergency blat back on the frequency. And he, he quickly turns the volume down. And then the carrier signal drops. Luke, Luke. And he slams the handset back into the cradle. And then he looks, he looks over at Giovanni. He doesn't say anything. He just motions to the radio. It doesn't matter, Owen. If we drive in this storm, we will die. And we will not be able to help anybody. If she's in the bridge, she's safe. She'll just have to wait. We all will just have to wait, and I know it sucks, and I know it's hard, but there is no way we're going to go driving off into this storm, and as if uh, nature were making the point for him, something huge goes flying by over the gully that they're in, slamming into the side of the gully and kicking dis debris and detritus all over. It comes raining down on the canopy. And Giovanni shrugs. And they sit in silence. And they will not be able to get back to the Wanda for, we'll say one die six, one die six hours. Three hours. So the storm will blow over in two hours. And then it will take another hour for them to race back as best as they can. So I think in that time, it would be... Uh, we'll make a... We'll do a little spotlight with Alicia... And so she's sitting there, she's sitting there in the dark. She's got her screwdriver still in that white knuckle grip, waiting to see what happens next. The red 
glow of the emergency lanterns casting grave shadows throughout the bridge. All right, so on the spotlight, I think I'm going to have her do a, a reaction roll to kind of guide as to whether this spotlight may go good or may go bad for her. Um, and I'll just leave it unmodified just to see. Eight. Okay, so um, that's a pass. So depending on what the uh, what what the spotlight turns out, uh, I'll, I'll use that reaction roll to guide you know whether she goes into a dark place or maybe whether she uh, is more rational or in in control of herself. So using the um, inspiration tables here on page seventy three. I'm going to roll for the ship. Oops, that was one die six. I need two die six. Okay, a four and a two. So a four and a two on that table gives us a klaxon. That gives me an idea. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what the next uh, inspiration is. Um, now I'm going to, because it could be an action. You know, maybe she does something uh, because she's 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 looking. She's tired of of being trapped there. She's looking for something proactive she can do. Uh, so it may be an action, or it may be personality. Maybe she does have you know some kind of um well, not necessarily spiritual but maybe she does have some kind of emotional reaction um uh, possibly lasting i'm going to just i'm going to roll d66 and then i'm going to um, decide which one of those which of the options i like better all right so a two and a six two and a six on that table uh, give us betray or weary. Betray or weary. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to go with an action. And what she has decided to do using really focusing more on klaxon she sets off the ship's alarms she decides that she's going to that she can play this game too and so she just goes and um she sets off the general alarm so the lights start flashing the lights out in the rest of the ship dim down as it goes to emergency power and it's just blaring, warning, warning, warning. And she's she's trying to get Luke to do something stupid. She doesn't know what, but that's about all she can do. So she sets off the klaxons throughout the ship. She gets a set of headphones from the station, and she puts them on her head, trying to drown it out as she waits to see what Luke will do. All right. Now, is there anything Luke can do? Up to this point, we've really kind of played with the notion that he can't get into the bridge. And I think that's probably still true. The bridge is a, is a space designed to be, uh, you know, pretty... Um, pretty secure so as they wait as they wait as the klaxons are going off 
Luke is somewhere on the ship hiding in a dark corner, just hands over his ears like this. <sighs> on a five or a six in that time, he's going to figure out something to do. Or he's going to figure something out. Uh, maybe there's some kind of explosives he might try to open up the bridge. Um, something. We'll say on a five or six. Otherwise, he's just going to sit there and rock in the darkness and wait. Okay, nope. He, he does come. He starts pounding on the... After a while, he starts pounding on the hatch and he turns on the intercom and they can barely hear each other turn that off he has tried to he's tried to go and shut shut them off himself he smashed some of the some of the lights and he's beat some of the uh the the klaxons the physical speakers in the ship but there's too many of them they're just some of them he can't reach and they are going off and it's driving him mad and he's like shut the that off, you bitch! Shut it off! And Alicia's like, get in a room! Get in a room! We'll lock you in there until everyone comes back. I'll shut them off. I'll shut them off. Do it, Luke, please! No! No! And he clicks off the intercom and he pounds on the door for a while. And Lisa's got... She's ready to leap from the side. But he is not able to get in. And he runs off somewhere into the darkness. All right, so now, going back to the rover, back to the ATV, the storm finally blows down, uh, leaving only trace gusts of wind or random gusts of wind. And uh, Giovanni, he fires it up because he's ready to go now. He, he's ready to go, and he whips that thing uh, out of the gully. Everyone buckle up. It's going to be a hell of a ride. And he guns it, and the, the, the tires and everything, the, the whole vehicle starts bouncing as the tires grab for traction, and he's racing towards the beacon. Let's see... Normally, I would not make him do a roll because they drove out here, uh, but he's trying to race back. So we're going to, I'm going to have him do a, a ground vehicle roll to see if anything crazy happens as he's trying to push, push the vehicle. Uh, no modify. Mm-mm. All right, so he in 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 his rush to try to find some shortcuts, he ends up getting the vehicle stuck, and uh, so he has to he's rocking it back and forth trying to uh, get it unstuck, and then he finally gets free of of one uh, place, and then he gets. Uh, he gets stuck in another. And he, damn it! Damn it! And Owen is like, slow down. Slow down. Like you said, we're not going to be any help if we get stuck out here ourselves. Come on, just slow down. Let's go. All right, so that's going to add That's going to add an hour. In Game Effect, it's not really going to change anything because on the ship, everything is fairly static. But I think we will we'll roll it uh, we'll roll a random encounter. See something because they had to slow down because they had trouble getting uh, getting home. We're gonna roll on a random encounter. All right, so we're gonna jump over here to page one fifty one for the random encounters. And this is a three die six roll. Uh, 
Oh, okay, a 16. I don't, I'm not familiar with what the table's going to tell us, but that seems like it might be something. All right, as you can see, this uh, cross-country travel encounter, uh, it is broken up between Colony World and Uninhabited World. This is an Uninhabited World. Uh, so this is going to be a crossing. Uh, all right, so this storm... Uh, it, it, there's a barrier to travel. It's a river or a canyon or something like that. So the uh, the storm has unleashed a, um, say, a rock slide across the path that he was that Giovanni was trying to uh, find again. But the storm knocked something loose, and now there's a bunch of uh, loose boulders and scree in the way and there's there's really no way a no quick way around it and it adds another three hours uh, he can't get around but says forced uh, to uh, with various skill roles a barrier to travel river canyon taking one die six hours and various skill rolls. So I'm going to have him make another uh, ground vehicle roll. See if this one goes any better. Okay. So nine. So as he, as they come around, he, he almost doesn't realize that the path he's taking is now dangerous, that it's changed because he's in such a hurry. But he can feel the ground shift underneath the vehicle, and so can everyone else. Um, Rosemary lets out a little shriek, and everyone kind of clutches the handles of their seat. But he's able to uh, quickly put it in, in reverse and drive it uh, backwards along the route that he had taken just as, and, and he gets free of the blockage just as the face of this uh, this hillock or this mountain, mountain that, uh, that he was trying to get over slides away if he had not moved as fast as he had. The landslide would have taken them and, and the vehicle down with it to some unknown depths. Owen leans over and he uh, slaps Giovanni on the back and he says, that was some damn fine driving. But now we're stuck again. We've got to find another route. And they do find another route, but it's another D3 hours. In that time, back at the ship, does anything bad happen? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say on a five or a six again that Luke, given this extra time that's delaying the crew, Luke figures something out. Five or six. Uh oh. Okay, so Luke has figured out something. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna to go to the inspiration tables, and we'll just we'll just look there, and use that as some guidance. Let's see. I think that's what's page seventy-one. No. All right. So the inspiration tables. Uh, again, on 73. So we'll go for ship. Twenty two. Fire. Uh -oh. All right. Well, I already know exactly what's going to happen. Oh, 23. That would have been a good one, too. Life support. So Luke. Luke is. Uh, I, I can already see Luke is going to try to burn her out somehow, but we'll still look under the uh, we'll we'll look under the action. We'll look under the action to see what he's going to do. Okay, 
Okay, 65. 65 on our table for action. Gives us a move. Move and fire, move and fire. All right, so Alicia has kind of drifted off. She's, she's, her, her terror has exhausted her. It's been hours and hours. The ATV is not there. She's starting to think that maybe Luke did something to them somehow because they should not have been gone this long. So the worry, the adrenaline dump, and she sits in her pilot station still with her screwdriver in her hand. And she jumps awake as she hears Luke's voice nearby. And she screams and she just starts stabbing, swinging her screwdriver in, into the air. And then she realizes that he's not there. That it's his voice over the intercom again. This time coming out from the speaker at her station. Alicia... Are you still in there? What do you want, Luke? Please, please stop this. And she can she still has trouble hearing him. She plugs her headset in so she she can actually hear him, but she can still hear the klaxons going off in the background from his side of the speaker and so it's it's hard to hear him. But she can hear the sneer in his voice as he speaks, through, even through the noise. You have not turned off the alarms. At first I hated you for it, but then they gave me clarity. They gave me insight, Alicia. Look, I tell you what, I'll let you out of the ship, and that way you can't leave me behind. I've already cut the weld that I put in trapping you. All you have to do is open and leave the ship. Do you think I'm stupid, Luke? You'll kill me as soon as I open that. She does get up, though, and she can she can see where part of the hatch looks like there's a, a very dull red glow. So she believes that he probably has uh, cut whatever weld he put on there. I'll go hide away. You won't even see me. I've even brought you a mask. There's no way I'm going to let you leave me on this planet. You can't even fly the ship by yourself, Luke. I think it can take off under its own in emergency situations, Alicia. Come on out of there. You must really think I'm stupid. And then she shuts off the intercom and now she's back to hiding ready with her uh screwdriver ready to jab it through his eyeball if she come if he comes in there somehow there's something that you should probably know dear alicia It's going to get very warm in there soon. Since you would not come out by yourself, I'm going to have to smoke you out. And she suddenly realizes that she can smell 
something burning, the plastic smell of insulation giving way or, or of, of burning and crackling in the even in the dark red glow she can she can see it starting to grow hazy and she can feel she can feel it starting to burn her throat and her lungs and then she sees one of the stations sparks and smoke starts pouring from the station and as it's sparking and blinking it's uh, lighting up the room like little uh, like little flash bulbs and luke is back on the intercom did you know that you can set a lot of things on fire by shorting out the power oh yes yes that's kind of how i started with the captain you know i set up a little trap and he did a little jig for me <laughs> Guess what, Alicia? You're not going to be able to get out of there unless you come out quickly. And that's going to put us right at about an hour. So we'll stop and we'll decide, we'll see what Alicia decides to do next. That's... It's a technical issue, you know. I mean, I'm fairly familiar with electronics and ele uh, electrical power and, and things like that, just because of my trade and in time in the Navy and stuff. It, it would be uh, it would be difficult to uh, you know do that to short out something down the road. But I have seen some some weird power troubles that uh, have have smoked computers and packs and equipment so just using luke's experience uh, i'm going to leave the exact details up to the listeners or watchers imaginations so uh thanks for coming along and we will see you next time happy gaming <laughs>